guys. Stop. Can Black we show pepper. that placenta too? You nope. said placenta. <laughs> we show the. Oh, I just spilled that all over myself. Oh god, I'm smelling like garlic. Is it my hair? Yeah. Eek. Welcome back to Allie Can Cook featuring Mama McManus. Hi, I'm Mama McManus. And I'm Allie. And on today's video, we are going to be doing another taste test. Yay! This week's recipe is actually going to be one that I found online. It's a site from a girl called Keep It Kind, I believe. I will have the link in the description box below. But what caught my eye about her recipe is that she uses polenta to make pizzas, or what I like to call polenta nice. pies. Yeah. We actually tried them out last weekend. We worked with it and we tried a bit of a variation on the recipe and I think we really actually nailed this. And they're great for an appetizer or for lunch and a different variation on having dough. It's one of my favorite types of food. I am obsessed with polenta fries so when I saw the polenta pies I was like, oh my gosh, we have to try this. Yeah. So if you want to see how to make these super delicious polenta pies, keep watching. The first thing that you're going to want to do for these pies is Preheat your oven to 350 degrees and prep the dough part of it. For the dough, we are going to be using pre-made polenta. In her recipe, she makes it from scratch, which I recommend doing if you want to do that. We just found it easier to buy pre-made polenta at the store and then knead in different spices to it. So this is the polenta that we're going to be using from the store. So for the spices, we're going to be using garlic powder, some basil leaves, some onion powder, and then some black pepper and also some thyme. We're going to use about three quarters of this pre-made polenta. After you've sliced up your polenta in the bowl, you want to use a pastry masher to just start to mash it all together into a dough-like consistency. have your polenta mashed up like this, you're going to want to add in a teaspoon of basil, a teaspoon of dried thyme, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and half a teaspoon of salt, and then half a teaspoon of black pepper. So after you've added all your spices in, you're going to want to mash it up with your hands and make a dough-like consistency. So after you have your dough all mashed up, you're going to want to start to make your individual pies slash pizza crust. The trick to this, what we realized the first time we tried to make them, was that they were a little too thick, so you do want them to be decently thin or else the polenta won't cook the whole way through and it won't get as crispy as it could. So just push them down and make it into a little pizza circle. Pie. Pizza pie. Pizza pie. Pizza, pizza is pie, technically, right? That's what the Italians say. Yeah. Really? Also, if you can just kind of push around and make an edge with your fingers. So again, in the actual original recipe, I think she makes the polenta from scratch, which you can definitely do. Um, we just, we're busy folks here in the McManus household, so it's easier for us to just buy polenta. Well, and also too, I think as a student, you're really busy studying. Yeah, so like I mean, there's no rule that you can't take some shortcuts when mm -hmm. you're cooking. Or if you're a mom rushing home from work. Yes. But I think, um, or you know, not even if your mom, if your dad rushing home from work, because dad should cook too. Yes, they should. So this is kind of the thickness and size that you want your pizzas to be. Now that they're ready, we're going to pop them into the oven for 20 minutes at a temperature of 350. So as our polenta pie slash peaches are cooking in the oven, we're going to start to prep our toppings for them. So we're going to slice up some figs and some apples as well as 
start caramelizing the onions, which takes a little bit of time because to caramelize them, you need to cook them very slowly and on low. So for the apples and the figs, you do want to cut them pretty thin because they are going to cook in the oven. It's about four onions for the recipe, but again, like we thought we were only going to make eight pizzas and we ended up with 12. So I would just eyeball it. Don't take it too seriously. Don't worry about the measurements too much. Most people know how many, how much toppings they need. Okay guys, so we're gonna prep the cheese sauce now. For the cheese sauce, you are gonna need one cup of raw cashews. I have our cashews here soaking in some water. I think I've soaked them for about two hours now, just because the last time we did this recipe, it was really difficult to get the cashews to come to a smooth texture. It was really, not, like, chunky. Yeah, and my housemate who's vegan, always soaked her cashews during the day when she's making a cheese sauce at night. And I think she said it was because it helps it kind of get a little bit looser and easier to blend. So hopefully that helps out this time. So you're gonna add in a cup of soaked cashews. Then you're gonna add in half a cup and two tablespoons of water. You're gonna add in four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. You're gonna add in two teaspoons of white miso. And then salt to taste. So you wanna blend it until it's a smooth consistency like this. So now that we've taken our pizzas out, we're going to now top them with our sauce that we made and with some figs, apples, some fresh thyme, and our caramelized onions. After you've topped it, you're just going to throw it back in the oven at 425 this time for about 15 minutes until it looks crispy and cooked all around. We have just taken our polenta pizzas out of the oven and we're gonna give them a taste test. Now, one thing I do wanna mention is that soaking the yes. cashews was perfect because it allowed us to blend it really easily and make a nice cheese sauce. Yeah, definitely soak your cashews for about two hours before if you can. Right, so okay. yeah, now we're gonna dig in. We have a fig one and an apple okay, here. I'm gonna try the apple. Okay, I'll try the fig. These turned out really well. Mm -hmm. So we made them a lot thinner this time and they are fully cooked on the inside, crispy. Mm -hmm. And I really like the apple and the um, caramelized onion. Mm -hmm. It's really, really tasty. I'm only giving this one a big thumbs up. Keep It Kind was the site that we found the recipe mm -hmm. on. And we changed it a bit, so hers, if you look at it online, will be a little bit different than this, but these are really, really good. They're a great thing to bring to a party. And also just have a snack for lunch, like just to kind of fancy it up. So, and they're not hard to make, they're pretty no, simple. Very simple. Really fast, so definitely would give this one a big thumbs up. Try it out, guys. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. And if there's any other recipes that you guys want us to try out too, please let us know. Thank you so much for watching. And remember to subscribe so that you're up to date with all of our videos and what we're cooking. Yeah, so if you like this video, again, give it a big thumbs, thumbs up. up. And we will see you guys soon. Bye. Bye, guys. One right from killing and blood and guts. Mm -hmm. Why not?